What do you think makes something a parallel gun? Opposite sides are parallel. Probably the most commonly seen parallelogram is where they just kind of skew it a little bit. That's pretty close. Now, what makes it a parallelogram? This is congruent to this. They're not congruent, I'm sorry. That's parallel to that. And this opposite side is parallel to this opposite side. So we're going to start a list here. If something is a parallelogram, then dot, dot, dot. First thing we're going to say, opposite sides are what? The neat thing about parallelogram is there's, like I said, there's a lot going on. When I say this figure here is a parallelogram, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things you know are true by just saying that it's a parallelogram. The second thing, I'm going to abbreviate now, opposite sides are, anybody have a guess at what I'm going to say next? I already said parallel. When you talk about sides, you say congruent. However, that means their measures are so this is congruent to this, this is congruent to that. How fun. Am I talking about proofs or are we talking about a parallelogram? So you need to worry about that, don't you? Three. What does that mean? Opposite angles are congruent. So this angle is congruent to the one opposite it, that one. Four. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive means the one right after the other, right? Supplementary means they add to 180 degrees, correct? I'm missing anything. I know there is another one. I'm curious if you guys can find it in the section. I'm going to have to draw a new picture for this one. 
Nothing about parallelogram as a right angle. That's possible, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, Santa Claus. No, I guess that is possibly another one, but I, I'd rather not go with that one because I think I don't put that in my list because, to be quite honest with you, That's pretty, no, yeah, the diagonal is what we're talking about. But to me, that's pretty obvious. Okay. Do you guys know what a diagonal is? It's a line that goes diagonally across. So these are the two diagonals for a parallelogram. So diagonals will always bisect each other. What does that mean, bisect each other? So now, I know and never in any way did I say that the diagonals are what? Congruent, because they're not. Not necessarily. But what I did say is the point where they intersect, basically they cut each other in half. So this diagonal here is cut into two equal what? Parts. But this diagonal here is cut into two separate and probably different equal parts. Make sense? They just cut each other in half. It doesn't mean that this is congruent to this. Do you get the point of what I'm making here? Each diagonal gets cut in half but not necessarily each half is not equal to the other half. Does that make sense? The last one, one, which I'll need to draw a new picture for this too, one diagonal cuts the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So if I was to draw another picture here, we'll call this A, B, C, D. And I'll draw it. That triangle ADB is congruent to triangle CBD. Okay? And it looks like if those are two equal triangles, doesn't it? So, why do we go through this? Why is this its own section? Because by just saying it's a parallelogram, you know that those six things are true. I'd say that's a lot. There's a lot going on inside a parallelogram. You may not realize this, but a rectangle is a special type of parallelogram. In a rectangle, the opposite sides are uh, parallel. A square is a special type of parallelogram. A rhombus is a special type of parallelogram. However, all we are going to do this semester before we go is we're just going to go over 6-1 and 6-2. The more I think about it, I think I'm going to leave 6-3 since it's an extension of this for when we come back. So it'll be us kind of reviewing 6-2 when we do 6-3. Didn't you say 6-1 and 6-2 about the semester? Yes, they will.
So if you were a bookmaker, isn't there a lot of different little problems I can make from that information? Think about it. You know, they say this is a parallelogram, and they give you, a, they give you the measure of this side. And then they ask for the measure of that one. Well, you'd know that they were equal because it's a what? Parallelogram. Or they could give you the measure of that angle. You'd know it'd have to be equal to that angle. This angle would have to be equal to that angle. Why? Isn't this a transversal? These are parallel lines, alternate interior angles. I could give you the measure of that angle and ask you to find the measure of all three of the others. You should, because the measure of this angle is going to be the same as what? If this angle, for instance, this angle was 60. Don't necessarily have to write this down, but let's say this angle right here was 60 degrees. What's this one then? What's this one then? What's this one then? See what I mean? Isn't there all kinds of different problems you could create from that? I could say this one is x plus 4 and this one is 2x plus 10. Find x. And I'm talking about the angle here. That's why I put degrees on it. How would I find x? Yes, I would say this plus this equals. See what I mean? There's a lot of different things you can do. Let's look at the book. Look at number two. Now, look back at the one through six properties about a parallelogram that you need to know. Which one do you think is going to be the most helpful for number two? One, two, three, four, five, or six? Three says that the opposite angles are congruent. So you know that angle L is congruent to angle J. So can you create an equation? 2x minus 1 equals what? There you go. Look at number three. Which one of those uh, facts about a parallelogram are going to be useful here? Opposite sides are congruent. Number, number two. two. Opposite sides are congruent. That would equal what? That. Look at number five. Which one of those six facts would be useful there? These arrows are pointed. This is representing the length of that diagonal from here to here, right? Three B plus one is no, I didn't ask that. I asked which of the six facts I gave you would be useful. Five. Number five, which states that the diagonals do what to each other? So this is congruent to what? And this is congruent to what? Oh, two equations, two unknown. No, they both have B's. So you can find B and W then, can't you? You guys understand what I'm saying? Because didn't, didn't the number five say that this is congruent to that? That's congruent to that. So the equation would be 4Y minus W, or yeah, 4W minus 7 equals 2W plus 3. Your other equation would be 2B plus 5 equals... 3B plus 1. And that's all because you knew that fifth one. Get your head up. That's a pretty good, uh, you see how you're just going to use these facts to do these problems.